Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again. Been awake for about 40 seconds uh, for when we started this video. I slept in way too late. My internal clock is way off because it's now uh, going to be light out for maybe six hours a day. So um, that's cool. Pro probably more like eight hours a day. It'll be light out. The rest is going to be dark. So my internal clock's all screwed. Um, so I slept in about two hours later than I normally would here on the weekend. So, but nonetheless, uh, we're going to get the video and we're going to get it out early for you, uh, like normal. I try to get them to come out around 10 o'clock uh, central time. Uh, this video is going to be on um, another modern helmet for, for a while. The one I don't know how popular this one will be. Um, but for those of you who recognize this, uh, and for those of you who don't recognize this, uh, this is the Cry Precision Airframe. Now, Cry Precision is a name that some of you guys might now in your head be like, hmm, where have I heard that before? Well, if you are aware of what Multicam is, or the current U.S. Army's uh, camouflage of OCP, uh, uh, Cry Precision designed both of those. OCP is the precursor to multicam um, that the U.S. Army bought before they ever adopted uh, UCP. Uh, just goes to show you how dumb they were in really adopting that pattern because the one that they have currently, they actually owned the rights to before they bought UCP. Um, so they kind of swept that one under the rug because that camouflage pattern really got a lot of people killed. Um, and they really didn't want to let people know that the pattern they're wearing currently, which is infinitely better, uh, they own already the rights to produce and make uh, uniforms on since before they had that stupid gray digital UCP garbage. So you, uh, Cry Precision designed that. Uh, Cry Precision uh, also, yeah, designed Multicam. And they designed a lot of the derivatives of Multicam. So if you were in the Australian military, uh, the original land pattern of your camouflage was developed by Cry Precision. Uh, the Spanish uh, version of Multicam was helped uh, developed by Cry Precision. Uh, that a lot of the the camouflage patterns in the world that are based off Multicam, uh, Cry Precision has a hand in designing. They aren't just like a country taking that pattern and tweaking it enough to to use uh, stuff like that because cry precision owns the rights to certain things that are going on in that pattern not just the pattern um they're very smart like that which is why uh, multicam is so expensive because you have to pay royalties because they own the rights to the pattern itself and then a bunch of the elements in the pattern so um but for those of you who don't know cry precision also designs body armor uh, and this is their, like, flagship helmet, the Airframe. It is a two-piece design of ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, um, which is kind of the new adamantium everyone's making everything out of. Uh, it's a very lightweight helmet. Uh, it's, it's a lot like an Ops Corps, but has a little bit better, uh, some, some newer, nicer features than an Ops Corps does. Uh, the two-piece design gives the helmet a little bit of flexibility and an impact, uh, it also provides this little gap back here, which uh, improves ventilation a ton over the air, uh, over the ops core, which the ops core does not have. Um, the overlapping uh, design of this also provides uh, a, uh, it's kind of a unique shape, as you can see. It's not incredibly round. Uh, it provides a more sloped shape, which is actually better at deflecting uh, rounds and debris, uh, which is better than the ops core. And it, uh, this two-piece design allows for pressure that goes off underneath you, such as if you're riding in a car in an IED blast, uh, it allows the pressure to escape out the top of the helmet rather than the helmet catching that impact and that shockwave and forcing it into your skull, uh, much like an ops core. So for those of you who run ops cores or your military runs ops cores, this thing is actually almost statistically better than an ops core in every way and your military decided that was a good idea to go with because these actually came out around the same time as the ops core um so you're wrong your helmet's not that great um 
It's just average. So, uh, this has a really, really interesting helmet. I had the ability to get one of these quite a year, uh, quite a few years back. I've had this for forever, quite a very, very long time, and it has no cover on it because I'm still deciding what to do with it. It's kind of a work in progress to me. I had it all kitted out to how I liked it. It's really the only high-speed helmet that I own left, and I bought it because it's so weird and interesting. I like weird and interesting stuff. Um, because what other helmet do you know has this weird kind of shape, two-piece, interesting design to it that's currently out there? I, d I don't know of anything, but maybe you guys do, so if you do, drop it in the comments. Um, but I bought it because it's weird, basically. And I got it as just a shell. And I had to put everything else in it, and it was, a f it was an overrun uh, for the U.S. Uh, Special Forces. And I know a lot of people in the body armor uh, world that kind of design and do stuff, and I was able to get it for relatively cheap, kind of through a guy, through a guy, through a guy. Um, not full price, but still rather expensive, but cheaper than what they're asking for. Uh, put my own shroud on it, put the rails on it, put my own liner system in it, and uh, I'm debating on what to do with it. So I'm not really a big fan of tan or desert colorways, so I'm thinking of repainting this helmet. I'm going to do it right, not just like spray paint. I'm going to get like the hardened on paint and everything like that. Uh, and probably really, really get to get to work on a project on this thing, maybe starting in the New Year's. Uh, now, this helmet doesn't really have a, a super cool or storied history. It hasn't really been mass adopted by anybody. I mean, Australia is kind of fucking around and buying everything under the sun, but they don't really train their soldiers. All that super great, from what I understand, that... Um, from what I've been told by multiple people in the Australian Army, they have reservists that have been in the military for two years that haven't even shot a gun yet. And they're buying for soldiers this type of stuff. Um, which seems like their priorities quite quite aren't good. They're, they're good helmets, don't get me wrong. They aren't buying airframes, though. They're buying SWAT frames, which are Kevlar versions of these, um, which are heavier and a little bit thicker um, because they really don't want to be spending multiple thousands of dollars per helmet. Um, but they'll spend $8,000 per helmet. And then, um, <laughs> I, I just don't even want to get into it because somebody in the Australia, somebody in Australia is going to come at me in the comments because they think that their country is just the hottest shit that's ever been shit. Um, and it's not. Um, but you got, you got to look at the negatives too, man. You can't just look at the positives. That's all I'm saying. Got to, got to look at the whole picture before you talk about just your favorite parts. Um. And, uh, but this helmet's been around on the field for, for almost 20 years. It's been around for a long time. You really don't see them until kind of the mid-2000s, mid to late 2000s. 2010s, they really start picking up in the Special Forces community and everything like that. Everyone that has any sense that didn't get any Ops Corps or didn't get a really good deal from Ops Corps um, or just didn't care about what Ops Corps had to offer usually went with these for good reason because they're better in a lot of ways than the Ops Corps. Um, they integrate well with uh, a lot of comms. They've, uh, Cry Precision has come out with stuff. Uh, they can take little uh, arc rail adapters for flashlights, uh, headphones, a bunch, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, they're really, really cool. They even have these neat little spacers here that you can clip goggles right into. So that way your, your goggles can be quickly and easily removed without having to like slide them over the helmet or have little brackets to, to run uh, straps through or anything. You can just clip them right in, have your goggles on, and then... When you're done, uh, take night vision. They're actually a very, very well-balanced, lightweight helmet. I don't normally like high-cut helmets. It's the only high-cut helmet I have. Um, uh, all the other good stuff. So, not a whole lot of story history. Not a lot of super people use these. I know that the Green Berets really use them. The Army Rangers use them to a uh, certain degree. The Central Intelligence Agency's uh, infield operatives use these. Um... Yeah, there's a bunch of people all over the world that use them. Um, they, send, they tend to be kind of favored by maritime forces. I'm not sure why. You see a lot of navies and like special naval forces all over the world using airframe, but you you really see ops course kind of everywhere else. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Just something I've noticed. I don't know if it has any correlation or anything, but I don't know. But we'll flip this around now and we'll take a look at the inside of the helmet. Um, it's not anything really special, and like I said, I really can't do a whole bunch of the history on this 
on its own because not a lot is super well known about it. But we'll still flip it around and take a look at the inside and everything like that and show you how it kind of fits together and how a, uh, how a cover's attached uh, to this helmet and all that cool jazz. And then we'll uh, come back here and I'll try it on and I'll spin around and we'll see how it bites and how it fits and everything like that. And then we'll conclude the video. Alrighty, so here we are looking at the inside of the helmet of uh, the crack resistant airframe, as you can see. Uh, I've kind of taken the liberty of undoing the chin strap. It is a Team Wendy cam fit chin strap. Um, I guess standard it would come with the same kind of chin strap as an ops core and for a liner uh, it would come with ACH pads but you'd get a bunch of little rectangular pads and the two trapezoidal pads. You wouldn't get a crown pad because of the overlap in the shell um, so you'd get a bunch of different thicknesses of regular Zorbium action foam pads um, but since this liner is all one piece, the the epic uh, Team Wendy liner is all one piece, uh, it really does good at kind of bridging that gap on the inside of the helmet where the plates overlap. Because as you can see, that's um right here, you can see it's a pretty big gap that you would have because of this step. Because of the rear half of the shell and the front half of the shell are just kind of riveted together there. And then you can see kind of the weave of the shell it's almost carbon fiber-esque you know it's a little little interesting uh, to see that um, uh, but it's not carbon fiber it's ultra high molecular weight polyethylene but it's woven kind of the same way it has like this kind of herringbone type pattern to it um, which is interesting I've never seen that before on a helmet uh, the uh, Covers attach via these little Velcro discs you can get that uh, you have a bunch here in the front as well. Um, right there to attach the uh, helmet liner. Um, and uh, then you got one kind of up here in the center on the back uh, just because there's a big slit in the top of the helmet cover to uh, allow the air vent to work properly because if you just cover with fabric it's not going to breathe as well. And obviously kind of plug that hole so they have a big split in the covers. And then you attach the bottom half to keep it from being kind of loose right here with this Velcro disc. Um, but it's, a, it's an overall, it's a very, very good helmet. It's very, very well balanced. It's very, very lightweight. It's, every, it's everything the high speed operator um, or, you know, uh, keyboard warrior um, that thinks they're the hottest crap ever would want. Um, basically, it's, it's nice stuff. So if you've got the money laying around, it's definitely a good helmet. Um, I haven't really heard any negatives about them from the people that use them. Uh, they seem to work fantastically well. Uh, they are incredibly expensive, though, as with everything else Cry Precision makes. Off the charts expensive, so if you can get one for a good deal and make sure it's the actual airframe, I don't have any experience with the, the SWAT frames or their, their lower end uh, of helmets. Um, but if you can get yourself an actual airframe for a decent amount of money, you should probably jump on it because it's a pretty pretty good helmet. Um, and like I said, they're super customizable. These are, I've customized this one. Uh, basically the shell and the rails are the only thing that's standard on it. This is all stuff that I've dropped in. Um, but even the standard stuff works quite well. It's quite adjustable and everything like that. Um, but this works better for what I kind of like in a helmet. So if I had to build one anyways, because this is my like First kind of modern project helmet aside from really, really gutting a CG634 and converting that to, to what I like. And that thing, I would probably still choose that thing over this thing, to be honest, just because it's got a little bit more coverage. I don't really like the high cut stuff and my neck muscles are pretty well developed. So you don't, you won't hear me bitch about how heavy it is. Um, but so we'll flip the camera back around right now and I will uh, try it on. And see how it uh, fits and stuff like that. Uh, adjust the chin strap accordingly and all that other cool jazz. And then we will start moving my head around and all that other good stuff. See where it bites, see where it pinches, see how it feels and stuff like that. And then we will conclude the video. Alrighty, so here we are now with the airframe. I'm going to throw it on here and we'll see how it fits, how it looks and everything like that. There we go. I like this helmet. I like this liner too. 
of, of pads. It's not quite as comfortable as like the standard, um, I really wish Oregon Aero made their, their pads in something like this because that would be absolutely fantastic. It's pretty hard to beat Oregon Aero uh, BLU kit pads. All right, so here we go. Got the helmet all adjusted, put on. Um, first things first, oh, I gotta run the BOA system, tighten it up, which uh, kind of helps distribute the weight a little bit more. All right, so has these little wires that are connected up here to the front bolts and they're connected to the rear bolts and all that they do is they kind of pull the the liner system a little tighter around your head to help with weight distribution um, which is nice because otherwise most helmets actually tend to be either very front or very rear heavy when you have stuff on them and even when you don't have stuff on them you might not notice it just because you're used to it but most helmets are actually quite front heavy so so now that that's all adjusted, um, rock the head around. It's a very stable helmet, basically no movement with this liner and this chin strap, um, which is good. With night vision, this would help quite a lot uh, and everything like that. Now when I look up, it, it's very nice when I look up. There's no bite or pinch or anything. There is a little bit of pressure on the back of my neck because this chin strap does stick down. The nape does stick down quite a lot. Um, and that's to basically make it so you can use the, the adjustment system on the chin strap, but it's not like a uncomfortable bite. It's not like it's pinching my neck or anything, but it's like a, you, you know, it's there. Um, you, you feel this pressure, but you really don't want to be going any further anyways. So, um, but so here's how it looks from the front. Here's how it looks from the side. Once again, if I look up, you can see that. There is just a little bit of bite back here, not a, not a whole lot, but just just a little bit um, with this chin strap. I don't know if that's something that would happen with another chin strap that you would choose, um, but that's something to just take into consideration. And of course, here we are. You can see where the this nape pad does come down quite, quite far. Um, so when we look up, not uncomfortable, but you can tell there's a little bit of bite right right along here so um but it works out it works out it's not it's not over the top i might just have the the chin strap adjusted a weird too so it's something i definitely have to play with this is really my forte um, but as you can see it's a pretty pretty interesting pretty good helmet as far as how it fits and how it wears and stuff like that and people tend to really really like them for what they are um so Hopefully you enjoyed this type of video subscribe if you like this sort of thing uh, If you believe that I am worth a contribution to help the channel, uh, which is great because YouTube money fluctuates Really oddly especially in today's day and age uh, It seems like one month. I'm not getting paid next to nothing in the next month. I'll make a good amount of money uh, Sometimes it's multiple months of nothing at all it really depends on how the government's going and stuff like that too. It's it's just there's no rhyme or reason to it at all. So if you think I'm worth a contribution, uh, I'll leave the uh, the link uh, that you can copy paste into your browser in the description uh, to the uh, Patreon. If you think that that's something I'm worth, uh, I would very much uh, appreciate even as little as a one dollar donation, even a one time thing. That's fine. Uh, but if you do become a contributor to the Patreon, you do get into the Discord, or the cult as I call it, um, where all the uh, really, really hardcore guys are, and you can talk about everything under the sun, share with stuff, ask questions. There's a lot of knowledge in there. Um, stuff that I didn't know or didn't previously know, or even know that I wanted to know, really, until until they started dropping a bunch of cool stuff into the, the Discord. It's, it's a lot of neat stuff in there, for sure. Um, not too many people in there. Maybe... 12 people in the discord not a whole lot so um but if that's something that interests you i greatly appreciate it, it helps support the channel quite a long ways which is going to help me improve my equipment help me improve uh stuff get new subject matter for videos and all the other good jazz um which i greatly greatly appreciate so because i like to make sure that i can get this information out there for you guys and everything like that um, in a most accurate way possible. I don't always get everything correct to those, so it also goes a long ways to help me acquire stuff to do better research and everything like that and improve editing software for videos and 
all that other good stuff. So as little as a buck a month can go a long, long, long ways. And the Discord's a really cool place. So hopefully you, you uh, subscribed and all that other stuff, made a contribution. If, if you are monetarily possible, if not, that's fine. Just watch the videos to their completion all the way beginning to end. Uh, that's the best way to help the, the channel like and comment. That helps in the algorithm, so I pop up in more people's suggested videos um, and all that other, other good stuff. Uh, thank you all for stopping by, and hopefully I can see all of you in the next video now. Bye-bye.